everyone. Welcome back to my channel and my craft table. Welcome if you're new. It's really good to meet you. Today, I'm going to be doing two projects that I'm super excited about. I'm going to be making an infusible ink mug, which I actually have done several times on this channel, but I'm super excited because I'm going to try out for the very first time sublimation on a mouse pad not infusible ink, but actual sublimation from a sublimation printer. So come along with me and let's see how these turn out. Okay, for this first craft, we are actually going to do an infusible ink mug and we're gonna be using warm gray infusible ink sheets. These things are fantastic. Each box comes with two transfer sheets. They are 12 by 12. It comes with butcher paper, and it does come with a little desiccant packet. Okay, so we are also going to be using this Cricut infusible ink mug. Now this is a beveled ceramic mug and this is 15 ounces. And these are pretty cool because the handle and the inside are gray. So they will match our cup. And this particular mug is for my student teacher. He had asked me, if I could make her a mug, and of course I said, absolutely I can. I'm just going to bring this out so you can see. Okay, that is gorgeous. And it is a dark gray. It matches this mug really nicely. Okay, so it looks a little black on screen, but it actually is, is a dark gray. Okay, so I'm actually going to set that aside for right now just so we can take care of our infusible ink. Okay, so I'll just put that there in my little cradle. So this particular warm gray color on the infusible ink sheet. Now I've actually already cut this design out and I am pretty excited about this design. So on the t-shirt swatch, this is what the gray will look like. So it's very muted before the heating process. And then after the heating process, it turns into the beautiful color that it's designed to be. So this is the warm gray. And I just like to swatch out my colors when I'm doing infusible ink, it's very helpful. So this is my cut design right here. I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna start removing all of the pieces that I don't want. And when I get to the interior part, I'll be cracking it so that I can get the ink off that I don't want to have. got everything weeded out. This is the design right here. So I'm just going to double check. It says explore the great indoors. I think that looks fantastic. Okay, so now I'm going to make sure that my Cricut Mug Press is starting to heat up. Gonna bring in the mug press. There we go, same doubt for you guys. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn it on. And this is going to heat up. And while this is heating up, we're gonna get the mug ready to go on the inside. Once we put this in, then it will count through these five dots and it'll ding to tell us that it is done. And then at the end of that, we will take it out and let it rest for about 15 minutes or so. I'm just gonna move this off to the side for right this minute. 
And I like to keep it on top of a heat pad just so that my surfaces are protected. Okay, so this mug right here, I do need to get a lint roller. I've already wiped it off with a lint free cloth. Okay, there we go. Boy, that really does not like to stick down. So this is more for good measure than it is anything else. Okay. Set that there. So the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to cut this down just a little bit. For some reason, I'm not sure why the tabs didn't cut all the way through. It always cuts all the way through. Maybe this is an interesting batch of infusible ink. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is while it is facing toward me, I am going to position this. Okay, let me get that on there. And I'm going to press this down really, really well. I want to make sure that that design is stuck on there nice and tight. Okay. I'm going to do the same to this other side here. Now the good thing, the good thing about infusible ink is that as soon as it's done, it is ready. Dishwasher ready, microwave ready, pumpkin spice latte ready, whatever your favorite drink is. All right. Now, because these handles here, these tabs didn't cut all the way out, they're actually already overlapping, which is good because, oh, there's our mug press, which is good because then I don't have to use so much infusible or heat resistant tape. So this is heat resistant tape and I'm just gonna put one piece here just to make sure. And then you're going to, I like to go around the top and the bottom of the mug just to be sure that there's no gaps because I really want this to, you know, be secure. Now you certainly do not have to do this step. This is completely optional. I just find that I have a lot of success by making sure that everything is nice and tight. I also feel like it helps keep all the infusible ink inside the transfer sheet. And so I've never had any bleeding through, um, you know, I've never had any bleeding through. So that's kind of a good thing. Okay. That is not going anywhere. Okay, so I'm going to bring this thing back in and we're going to set our mug right in here and close it down. And then while we wait for this to chime at us, we're going to do a sublimation project. Okay, we're just going to slide that right in there. Everything is covered. All right. So now this will count its way up through these lights and beep at us when it is ready. Okay, for my sublimation project, the very first project that I thought I would try out is a mouse pad. So I just purchased a sublimation mouse pad blank from Amazon, and I printed out on my printer, not a regular printer, but a sublimation printer. And I have the one that I'm using linked down in the description below, but I printed this out, and this inner circle right here is like kind of a, a deep teal color 
and it's got some variations, and then the, everything else is black. And I thought this would be a great first project to try, and I'm really hoping that it works well so that I can continue to do sublimation projects. This is very specific paper. It is sublimation paper, so I cannot use regular copy paper, and I cannot use just any old mouse pad. Everything has to be sublimation um, specific products. So the blanks have to be sublimation blanks, paper has to be sublimation paper, and the ink has to be sublimation ink. Okay, so I'm just gonna lint roll this mouse pad. Okay, now to protect my heat pad, I'm going to bring in, I have a piece of cardboard that I like to use for my um, infusible ink projects. And then I have two pieces of butcher paper for the bottom. I'm gonna lay that down right there. And then I've already cut this to size to fit this. So I just printed this in the middle of the paper. I did mirror it so you can see that we mirror it just like infusible ink or iron on. And I am just gonna lay this down. There's our heat press ready to go. I'm just going to lay this down right here in the middle of, of the mouse pad. And then I'm going to put on two pieces of butcher paper. And so for the settings, so I've looked them up and it was between 375 and 380 for about 40 seconds and medium pressure. So I'm going to go ahead and grab that heat press and we're going to see what happens. Okay, I'm gonna go straight down, gentle medium pressure, click my Cricut button, and just hold that for the time. Okay, so we are finished. I'm gonna just lift straight up, okay. So here is the nerve wracking part. I'm just gonna remove the butcher paper. And this paper is nice because I don't have any bleed through on here, so that's good. And, okay, moment of truth. Let's see how this did. Oh, I don't think I got enough heat on there. Darn it. I wonder if I can get that well, I may have to get a whole new thing. Okay, I don't know if I can salvage that. I might have to get um, another blank or do a reprint and have more pressure. Okay, so our mug is done. I'm gonna go ahead and lift that out. The handle is cool. And I'm gonna just leave it here on this uh, heat pad and let that cool completely. Um, I like to let it cool completely. I've had the most success by leaving it completely alone and not revealing it until it is cool. So that'll be about 15 minutes in my time and it'll be a split second for you. Okay, so while our mug is cooling right there, I went ahead and I repressed the mouse pad. Now I'm hoping that I got it completely lined up perfectly but if I did not, it's okay. It's a very inexpensive mouse pad and I wanted to do a test run. I thought that would be a great blank to use for a test run. So I pressed it for a lot longer this time. And I do find that sometimes when I do infusible ink projects that that also is true, that I have to go a little bit longer than the stated time. So I definitely went longer than the 40 seconds. And I'm gonna hopefully be able to salvage this project. And again, you know, if this was if this was a gift or for someone else, I would probably just throw the whole thing away and start all over. But because it's for myself and I'm really just trying to test out my equipment, I'm really just wanting to make sure that the ink is going to do what I wanted to do and get that deep, vibrant image. The 
the green, the bluish green that I'm going for is, is kind of like this, maybe not that blue, bluish green, but you know, you get the idea. Okay, so I'm gonna, moment of truth. Okay, not bad. Um, I do have a little bit of some ghosting over here, and I know that's from when I laid it back down. A little bit of ghosting here. It almost looks like a shadow layer, like you would do in Word. But this is the effect I was going for. And so before, you couldn't see hardly any color coming through this circle. None, hardly at all. And then this was all muted. And here it is. That actually, you know, for my first sublimation project for something in my craft room, that's actually not bad. Um, so even though this didn't work out perfectly the way I had hoped, actually I'm pretty pleased. So I know that my equipment does work and I just know that I have to use the um, heat press for longer than the stated time, which is totally fine. And so the good part is I didn't have any bleed through on any of any of my butcher paper, right? So all of this is still clean as a whistle, which is wonderful. And here is my mouse pad. So I'm actually so happy that that, that worked. Now I can, now I know that I could make mouse pads for gifts um, and it's just gonna look beautiful. Let me check on the mug, and as soon as that mug is ready, we will come back and reveal it on camera. Okay, I believe our cup is ready to reveal, and I am so hoping that this mug comes out because, like I said, this is for my student teacher. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to release all of the tape that I put around the top of the mug. It comes off just like that. And then I'll do the same thing with the tape around the bottom of the mug. I will pull this one off. Okay, then the big reveal. So now I've just got to find where, there we go. Okay. Okay, everybody, hold your breath. Let's see if it worked. What it did work. How pretty. Oh my goodness. Okay. So this is her sweet little mug. And this is absolutely gorgeous. I am so excited and I cannot wait to um, text her about her little mug. She's going to love it. This is fantastic. And I really like this. I like the beveled bottom and I like the colored handle and the inside. That's super nice. I normally just do the 15 ounce, you know, straight with no coloring. These are great. Okay, well, today I will mark today as a success. You know, when you're crafting, there's just some, you know, built in times where you're going to either waste materials or have to redo things or like in the case of this this was my test um my test run and i learned several things that i would definitely do different next time this really you know turned out great i'm very very pleased with this it was very inexpensive um like i think it was less than six dollars even on Amazon. So I'll link this down in the description below, as well as this particular mug here and the infusible ink. But the, um, the sublimation paper did a great job. I'm pleased that my printer is working. I've been so nervous to try it out, thinking that I wouldn't be able to do it, but I was able to do it. So, you know, that's a success. I definitely encourage you to try new crafts, new techniques, new supplies as often as you can and just learn new things. You know, as a teacher, I'm always learning new things 
um, on the daily. And I think that's so important for all of us. Okay, well, this was a great crafting session. I'm so glad that you joined me. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And until I see you again in the next video coming up, as always, happy crafting. Thank you all so much for watching today. I'm so glad that you can join me at my craft table. If you're not already, I'd love to have you as a subscriber. And don't forget to hit that notification bell. That way you'll know when new videos arrive. Have a great day and as always, happy crafting.